Number 13 in the college football live rankings, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, of course, jumping from the Big 12 to the Big 10. In my opinion, being from the Big 10, huge upgrade for the Big 10 Conference when you can bring in the Big Red Nation. You start to think about potentially some of the games with Nebraska playing teams like Iowa as a natural rivalry, of course, Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. Uh, but this is a team last year. They, they won 10 games, struggled down the stretch, losing three of their last four. When Taylor Mar Martinez ran the ball the first five games, people got excited. Maybe they used him too much. Once he got dinged up, the offense was not the same. However, they made it to the Big 12 championship, lost a close one to Oklahoma. Uh, what do you think of this first year in the Big 10 for Nebraska? Well, I think it comes down to two words again. It's you lost your momentum. You lost three of the last four games. Are they hungry and are they angry? If they are, and I got a feeling that we all know that coach, <laughs> Youngstown guy, <laughs> yeah. there be some hung, hunger and some angry, uh, anger there. However, how's the team going to respond? They lost their momentum. They lost a bowl game. They probably should have won. They had better talent. They lost a game. How do they react? And I think that's going to be key. I think a big key is that Martinez was a freshman last year. And, you know, he, he was a special story in the first five weeks. Nobody could stop him. Um, but he got dinged. And when he got dinged, the offense kind of showed you that they relied heavily upon his ability to run the ball. New offensive coordinator, Sean Watson, now is out. Tim Beck moves in to take over as the play caller. You got to think that they're looking around and trying to find some ways to take the pressure off of Martinez having to do it all. You know, right. trying to find the backs more chance to make plays. Mm -hmm. Finding something in the passing game to take the pressure off of Martinez always having to make the big plays with his legs. One thing you can, you're confident with, though, is that Martinez, because of his legs and his speed, that he is an asset. And they'll find a way oh, to make man. sure they protect him, but they also use his explosiveness. Dynamic. His big playability. I did the Kansas State game last year when he went out in Manhattan. It was just crazy what he did in that ball game. Just running past people like they were, they were nothing. You recruited a bunch of them at Florida in the day. But this, I think this football team, the disappointment that they had last year to their season, because they had national championship expectations. I think the edge about them now with Bo Pelini is going to come back strong. And the fact that they're in a new conference that's what's going to help get them back up off the carpet. Yeah, and I think uh, Bo Pelini, I mean, he sent a message, obviously, to the entire team uh, when he confronted Taylor Martinez on the sideline last year. I mean, you could take from that what you will. I mean, some people don't like that kind of thing, but obviously, you know, he's running this program, and they know who's the boss. And I think the same thing can be said, really, about the, the assistants. And the, and the players see a move like that, and they say, look, I mean, this guy's, this guy's being serious about this. Maybe a lot of those guys thought the same thing. Maybe they thought that they needed the change uh, at the offensive coordinator position. But I think it all comes down to how Taylor Martinez responds when he's in the ball games. I think when he has been pressured, obviously he was a little dinged up, but when he's been pressured, he's made some very poor decisions, as a lot of quarterbacks do. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I think that they need to have ways to take some pressure off of his legs and, and just running the ball and be able to get him some downfield throws to take some pressure off. There's three things that are going to have a major impact on, on teams. You know, we're looking at preseason polls, which we all know what that yeah. means. Yeah. But it's momentum. Obviously, they lost some momentum. They have to get it back. Uh, you're not going to know uh, the injury situation plays a big part. You just won't know what happens until that starts. And then you're going to take a look at the injury, uh, the, uh, the schedule. And right now, you, they're going from the Big 12, 12 North which, you know, everybody has their opinions on the Big 12 North, <laughs> and you're stepping in the Big, big Ten. Yeah. And they're, At someone Wisconsin. said they, they yeah. gave them a very difficult schedule to yeah. start the season. Nebraska, I will say this, Nebraska, of all the places I've been, that's one of the toughest places to go play. Mm -hmm. That's, in my mind, one of the top five, ten places Absolutely. as far as a, a Big Ten team going to travel to Nebraska. The problem they have is a lot of their tough games in conference at Wisconsin, at Penn State, at Michigan, they get Iowa and Ohio State both at home, but they're on the road in some tough environments. So we're going to find out how they're able to adjust to that. Their defense, I think, has, has become a staple. You know, when, when they lose some great players, uh, they, I think they have proven now that they can replace them. And they're going to lose some great players, especially in the back end of this defense. Uh, but I think that they play this matchup zone mm -hmm. as well as anybody. And when you have seven guys essentially on the field, hybrid guys that can cover in space, can defend the run, they rely on that defensive line. And Jared Crick coming back this year, I think could be Indomitian Sue-like. He had a good year last year, decided to come back. He could become a dominant force and a guy to really pay attention to in the Big Ten because they rely so much on that front four. I'll tell you another guy out there, uh, Levante Davis. Oh, man. That he's... linebacker, that guy's a beast. Yeah. I mean, he's all over the field. And some of the games you, you call, he's like 10-plus tackles a game. <laughs> he's everywhere. And, 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 you know, you have to hope Crick comes back and he's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so 
Yeah, there's that goes into your one of your three deals, injuries. You never know how they're going to play out. And, and, you know, to your point, Herbie, about the defensive line uh, and speaking of the defensive coordinator, Carl Pellini, and, and kind of the philosophy that they have with their defensive linemen, it's a little bit different. They go after some different guys more squatty body guys and their philosophy really is to just compress pockets and when you talk about teams these spread offenses like an Oklahoma or a Texas and they need space to operate and you have those hybrid guys on the back end you've got that front uh, that, that, that defensive front really compressing pockets, making them make quick decisions and then dropping those right. speedy guys. And David's not a big guy. Right. Devontae David's not a big guy playing linebacker. He's more of a hybrid safety type guy as well. And those guys can really make some plays on the back end. I think part of, of picking up a program, and, and again, you've lived it, but Bo Pelini, I think, it's one thing to be at Nebraska, but it's another thing, the team that he inherited, he's still teaching them how to win and how to be consistent. And I think last year was a perfect example. At times, they looked like they could play with anybody. Mm -hmm. And then the next week, they just a little bit flat. And, and if you're Bo Pelini and you're Carl and the rest of the staff, you gotta hope that last year's experience taught them that it's not just get up for one week. Mm -hmm. It's you have to be able to stay consistent for, for 12 weeks to be able to have any kind of run in the Big Ten. Taylor Martinez, a game that I saw, I think it was a game that you said you called, it yeah. was him and Denard Robinson were the two premier, premier players in, in, in yeah. college football. And that's the age-old question about running that quarterback. You know, you mm -hmm. talked about Dwayne Dixon the other day at Oregon. And, and yeah. here they are running for a national championship. We had that conversation nonstop about how many times you run that guy because if he goes down, mm -hmm. you're, you're yeah. going to lose him. But as a coordinator or as the, you know, they have a new coordinator out back, yeah. you have to let this guy play. I mean, what I saw of this kid, he's one of the most dynamic guys in college football. Make sure you have a good backup. Let this guy go play, especially in that conference. Not everybody had RoboCop back there. Yeah, I was getting ready yeah, to say, yeah. when, that's when, not you've fair. Got, when you've got a beat, I mean, that's not, you've got, you've got a tank back yeah, that's there. Not five. Five. Yeah. Five that's not fair. That's not that's, that's, you're 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 not Should we run him? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, well, hey, from a, from a scheduling standpoint, though, keep this in mind for Nebraska. They're into the Big Ten. They play UT, Chattanooga. They have Fresno State. Washington at home, Wyoming, and then mark your calendar October 1st, their first Big Ten game on the road in Madison. So if they win their first four, you got to believe there'll be a lot at stake for both teams October 1st. Watch out for Washington, though. That game right oh, yeah? there. That, 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 the Shark, he's doing a good job out of it. He sure is. -dub. He is. But remember that October 1st, Nebraska at Wisconsin, Nebraska's first taste of Big Ten football in Madison.